joining us online. Great to be back with you. Father, we just thank you tonight for your, your presence with us. Lord, we thank you that everything that we have already set into motion has been guided and directed by your Holy Spirit. We stay on that path tonight. We thank you for opening up our hearts, our minds, Lord, to be receptive that all of the day's events, tomorrow's events, and the day after, would it'll be there. Lord, help us just to sub, set that aside and set this time aside for you. We give you praise in Jesus' name. We all said, amen. amen, amen. Well, tonight he's talking about Christian sense. Have you ever met someone that had book smarts but no common sense? It's frustrating, isn't it? And it's just as frustrating for them that we don't get where they're coming from. But I've met many people in my life that had no wisdom at all. Ever heard the term zeal without knowledge? It means getting ahead of ourselves. And so tonight he's going to talk about our sins and as Christians what we should be expecting. When you continually affirm and confess, I thank God, though it looks like the mountain or the problem is getting bigger, it is not. In the name of Jesus, I see it removed by the eye of faith. Somebody will say, only a nut will say that. If there is a mountain still there, if the trouble is still there and you know it's there, you can't deny its existence. Yeah. You see, sometimes when I start teaching on this, some will say it sounds like Christian science. One lady punched her husband in a service in Texas and said, because my wife overheard them, that sounds like Christian science. It's not Christian science. I like what Brother Kenneth Hagin says. It's Christian sense. Now, this is important. If you have a highlighter or a pen, I don't deny the existence of, I would circle that word, the mountain. I'm not denying the mountain in my way. I'm not saying it's not true. That would be lying. Because according to the fact of this world, quote unquote, that mountain is there. That'd be like saying that chair is not there. It's there. But is that chair going to hinder me from getting to you, Bonnie? No. I'm not going to allow it to. And so in it, I think as we talk through this, we have to understand we're not denying the symptom. I think sometimes people can get weirded out. Even Christians over getting sick sometimes can get weirded out. Of, oh, I shouldn't be sick. Well, we don't have to be sick. That's the truth. But how many of you have found, you know what, I live in this body and it's a process and my faith is a process and, and maybe I'm not at a level where I can never be sick again. But I'm working towards that. And in the meantime, when I get sick, I'm going to do what I need to do. I'm going to take medication in faith, believing it's going to help heal me and make me well. I'm going to do what my doctor, who, the, the, who God gave wisdom to treat me, so God's involved even when the doctors are involved. Don't get caught up in this, I don't have to go to the doctor because I have the great physician. That's true, we do have the great physician. He should be the first stop and, and hopefully the only and last stop. But if we're still working through our faith and we're not there yet and a doctor is needed, go to the doctor. There's nothing wrong with that. Who gave the doctor's wisdom to help heal? It wasn't the devil. Because the devil steals, kills, and destroys. Doctors are trying to provide life and extend life. I'm not generalizing the negative ones. Get them out of your mind. I'm talking about the majority. So why would they be trying to extend life? Because God has placed that within them. That desire. And they went to school and they studied for it. And God directs, hopefully, their, they allow him to direct their day. But in it, sometimes we, we want to deny the mountain. No, the mountain may be there, but our God is greater than that mountain. That fact, remember, he created facts so he can change fact. I'm not saying he created the problem. I'm saying he created fact. If he created fact, what, let there be light. Is that a fact? Is there light? Could he override it right now and say, light's off? 
Absolutely. So we got to understand that. I don't deny the existence of the mountain. I deny the right of it to exist in my way. I don't, yes. Yes. I'm on page 25. 25. Chapter 3. Mm -hmm. Page 25, and we're getting down to the bottom of the page here. I don't see it as being in my way. I see it in the way the word said it, removed. Let me read that again. I don't deny the existence of the mountain. I deny the right of it to exist in my way. I don't see it as being in my way. I see it in the way the word said, removed. It's a, it's a mindset, okay, for, for us to go in and then to say those six spots cannot be found, we call them resolved. We say that that mountain may have been in our way, but on our way to faith, on our way to our victory through faith, that mountain has to move. Why? Because we said so. Well, who are you? I'm God's kid. And he told me that I have all authority that he has. Jesus said, I give all authority that I have, I give to you. If that's true, it's true. So who's going to question what I'm saying? The devil. Oh, well, who gives you the right to say that? Jesus. Got a problem with that? Talk to him. Next. I mean, we've got to be the... He, he goes on in chapter 7 to say, why are we talking more about the devil than God? He said he sat through a church service and recorded the amount of times they said, the devil's on the move, the devil's this, the devil's that, the devil's this. He said the devil got more, more air time in that service than Jesus did. Then he asked the better question, who, who gets glorified in that? We don't even think about this stuff because it's just programmed into our DNA. The devil wants us speaking these things in the flesh, not in the spirit. I'm not talking about programmed into our spirit. But our flesh is wired what? We were born in sin. Right? Every single one of us. So we have to understand these mountains that, that they may be in the way. That's not true. They're, even if they're in the way, they have to move when we say so. Well, I don't believe that. Well, then you put your faith where? In God? If we didn't put our faith in God, where to go? Well, I don't want to say that. I want to say I may have put my faith in the devil. Are we intentionally doing that? No. But see, in, in, in our day-to-day -day and in this dirt suit that we live in, these things have to be stripped out of us. He goes on to say this. Let's take a look at Hebrews 10.38. It says, Now the just shall live by faith, but if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. He goes on to say that the just shall live by faith in, this, in the text here. We walk by faith and not sight. Now, it says this. A lot of Christians are walking by sight and not by faith. Let me give you an illustration. Suppose you're driving down a highway at 60 miles an hour. Someone pulls out three blocks ahead of you, and they're right in the middle of the road crossways. You slam on your brakes and say, there's a car right in the middle of the road. A car from behind hits you, and suddenly there's a 10-car pileup. Somebody says, what's wrong with you? You say, well, there was a car in the road. Well, sure it was, but it was doing 30 miles an hour. Just two more seconds, it would have been gone. You were going totally by what you saw. You observed what was there, then you slammed on the brakes. This is what a lot of Christian people are doing. Whoa, it's still there. It's still there. Underline this. You have established it. But if you confess its removal, according to what the word says about it, I'd add, then praise God when you get there, it's going to be what? Gone. Why? Because you said so. The next time that you're trying to speak faith and you feel doubt creep up in your mind, you feel things creep up in your heart, in your spirit, who said that? Who's saying this to me? Who's saying this to me? Who? who? 
God wouldn't make me feel this way. Boy, the enemy sure would. I have to understand that the word says that I have all authority. If I have all authority, if Jesus had authority over sickness, do I? Now, had Jesus walked in perfect faith? Yes. Have I? No. So there is a process that we have to follow, but how did Jesus do that? Through the word. Time in the word. Goes on to say this, you see, if you drive your car the way you've been driving your spiritual life, you have wrecked that thing a dozen times. You can see that. You don't pay any attention to the car out there three blocks up the road. The computer in your head is telling you he's going 30. In two more seconds, he'll be on the other side of the road. There's no danger. I'll just keep going. And you sit there and you see that car. You never flinch. You never reach for the brakes. You just drive along perfectly at ease. Why? Because you have faith in what the guy's doing. You are, at, underline this, you are actually believing something you are not seeing. You are believing the end result. Driving your car successfully is based on split second timing. Now he may decide to just throw on his brakes right there and stop. Then you would want to know what's wrong with him. Apply that when the storms of life come against you and the devil says, look here, you'll never be able to get over that. Just ignore him and say, thank God I believe the word. Who's the word? Jesus. It will not be there when I get there. That kind of faith will move mountains. You may get to the foot of mountains sometimes before it moves. It will either move or there will be a hole coming in it. If you say so. But if you go mealy-mouthing around and say, I believe it's getting slower. I don't believe it's going to leave. You're in trouble. Just, Jesus said, say to the mountain, be removed and cast into the sea. Say what you want done with it. Don't go to God and pray, dear God, it's getting worse. He said that you can have what you say, and you said it's getting worse. That ought to tell you something. Jesus said the God kind of faith works by the words of our mouths. There is no release of the God kind of faith without the words of the mouth. Underline this. It is released by the words of your mouth. That's why the devil doesn't want you and me saying anything at all. I had a phone call from a, a dear friend of mine and, 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 and no, no one would even though I'm a childhood friend. I haven't seen him talk to him for years. Years. Actually, his wife uh, phoned Amy and I. How many of you know when your wife's calling the pastor, it's not good? Not good at all. Uh, not the pastor, but you know what I mean. Uh, a pastor. And so she said what she needed to say, and then he was supposed to call me. This morning. And I thought to myself, I don't want to talk to him. Anyone ever been there? Because I knew it was going to be uncomfortable. Now, I've been pastoring a long time, and I, I, I've never felt this way before. Never. About any, I've been in some serious meetings. And I just kept struggling. I was struggling. I struggled this morning. I, I, I'm trying to be transparent with y'all and just in, in, in struggling in my spirit, just wrestling. Anyone been there? And I said, man, I don't want to talk to him. And then he sent me a text and said, can I call you at 830? I said, yes. And at 830 came, he didn't call. I was kind of happy. This is sad, you know, in, in a sense. And at 8.32, he called. And out of it, I was able to speak some things to him, and, 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 and I believe some healing was administered to him, and, and ministry was, was given to him, and it helped him. And I think it will help her. And, and I was thinking about that as I was driving home today. I thought, why didn't I want to talk to him? You know, I mean, he was one of my best friends in school. Why, why wouldn't I want to talk to him and and 
it was just as clear as day the Holy Spirit said because the devil didn't want him ministered to. He wanted you to shut your mouth and not say anything. Don't take the call because the Holy Spirit would never direct us to not help somebody who needs help, who's asking for help. He wouldn't do that, but the devil sure would. And so I share these things with you because the words of our mouth, you know, it, it's released by our mouth. That power that God has given us is released when we say something. Me just thinking the things that needed to be said to him accomplished nothing. It was when I spoke them to him and tears flowed and I could hear things being repaired just within him. Anyone ever been there? And you know that ministry's happening. It's a genuine moment. And so out of it, I, I just, I think it's so easy for us as people to get so caught up in our own thing and what we've got going on and, and, and the things that we're, we're dealing with that we may not feel even the energy to say something. But look at Jesus. Did he always have time to minister to people? Always. And he spoke to them. He spoke things to their into their life. And sometimes there were hard truths that he spoke, but he, he cared enough to love them and to take the time to speak into their life. And so the devil will even get you and I to try and not speak to someone. Shh, don't even talk to them. You, you've tried encouraging them countless times. They reject you. Just leave them alone. Let them do their own thing. They don't want any part of a relationship Would Jesus say that? No. And so in it, you know, we have to ask ourselves sometimes that better question. Let's take a, a look tonight at Luke 17, verse 5. The apostles said unto the Lord, <laughs> increase our faith. And the Lord said, if you had faith as a grain of mustard seed, you might say unto this sycamine tree, be thou plucked up by the root, and be thou planted in the sea, and it should obey you. Now, if we look at that scripture, what's he say? If you had faith as a grain of mustard seed. Why would he say that? Small amount of faith? So they're at, if we go back and we look, they're asking for more faith. And Jesus says, well, if you had this much faith, which tells me they didn't have that much faith. Right? They walked with him. Sometimes I think we find it strange that our faith struggles and that we, we struggle in our faith walk. You know, I, I, again, I was telling Amy, I said, I, you know, a couple days have just wrestled in my spirit and, and, and maybe most of it was to do with that. Uh, but at the same point, you know, what ministered to me is when I began to study the word. What ministered to me is when I began to praise and worship. What ministered to me is when I began to read the book. And I thought to myself, if that's not happening in my life every day, it's only a matter of time before this is the norm. This fight in my flesh and feeling just frustrated with the devil, frustrated with circumstances, situations. Or I can remind myself, no, what's the word say? What, what, what has God spoken through his Holy Spirit? Am I speaking that? What am I speaking? What am I magnifying right now? The problem or the solution? And a lot of times we're magnifying the problem, which means that we're putting all our hope and our faith, on, on, maybe subconsciously so, in the enemy. Because God said, so why is God what God said less important or, or, or lower on the totem pole than what the devil's saying to you. Why is that? Well, because the devil's voice has become louder than the Holy Spirit's. He's now magnified. Well, how do I deal with that? Well, remember when Kenneth Hagin said that he had a vision, and in this little vision, in this vision, this little black demonic uh, 
spirit was trying to keep him from hearing what Jesus was saying to him. And Jesus is trying to speak to him, and this little demon's causing problems and interrupting. And now this is a vision he had. And he said to Jesus, after it went on for some time, Jesus, when are you going to do something about this? And Jesus said, when are you? When are you? I've given all authority to you. You have all authority. You have all the things I said. Do you believe me? How many times can we look back in our life and see where God has been faithful? If that's you, even one time, raise your hand. There's no hands in here that, for you online that are down. None. And is he the same God today as he was back then? And is his anointing and his Holy Spirit the same as it was back then? And does it apply just to the Jew or to me too? I'm Gentile, you're Gentile, right, for a not Jewish race. Well, why did God pick the Jewish race? Why? Because they believed him. They believed him. And in it, we have that same heritage if we believe him. goes on to say this. They were standing by that tree. It probably wasn't close to a mountain. He said that tree should obey you. He didn't say a word about increasing their faith. In other words, he said, you've got to learn to use what you have. He said the way you use it is to start saying some things in faith. Many people have desired healing. They want a harvest of healing and a harvest of physical needs met. Underline this. But they never planted a seed. The law of Genesis says everything produces after its kind. I could be the best rice farmer in the state of Arkansas and I could sit in my house and say, praise God, I believe in rice. My grandfather believed in rice. My daddy believed in rice. My brother believes in rice. Everybody ought to have a field of rice. I could have 10 tons of seed on my truck waiting to be planted, underline this. But if I just sit there and praise God because I believe in rice, I'll never harvest any rice. A lot of Christians are doing that. They're saying, I believe the Lord's able. Yes, brother, I believe he's able to heal me. Well, the devil knows the Lord is able. That's no profound statement. The thing we must determine is, will he? The word says he will. Then we must start agreeing with that. How? With our confession of faith. Saying what the word says. Saying what belongs to us. The word is what works. It's not our prayer that works. It's the word and faith that works. Prayer won't make faith work. Now what's that mean? That's a lot to take in. Because he's saying if you just pray and have no faith, what does that accomplish? You don't believe what you're saying. Then you, nothing. Then we have nothing. Right? So we have to understand that faith makes prayer work. Now we have determined from the word of God that you can have what you say. Not many people do because they have never controlled their words. Jesus said it. I didn't say it. I'm just telling you what he said. Now I'm smart enough to believe that Jesus knew what he was talking about. And Jesus has made a profound statement that you can have what you say. Let's Read 2 Peter chapter 1, starting with verse 2 tonight. Let's take a look at that. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of our uh, of Jesus our Lord. And 2? So, oh, 2, 1 and 2. Yeah, that's it. Chapter 1, verse 2. That's it. Right. How is grace and peace going to be multiplied to you? Through the knowledge of God and Jesus our Lord. What is some of the knowledge of God? How his faith works? How does God faith, God's faith work? If you find how his faith works, you'll know how your faith is going to work. Underline this. God never did anything without saying it first, and you hardly do either. You say, I'm going uptown. I'm going to work. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. 
You always say it before you do it. You are programmed to operate that way. So if you don't say some things in faith concerning some of the things you believe, you'll never operate in faith in those areas. The word says this in 2 Corinthians 4, 13 tonight. We have the same spirit of faith according as it is written. I believed and therefore have I. We believe and therefore speak. <laughs> 2 Peter 1, 3. Let's take a look at that tonight as we close. According as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and virtue. His divine power has given unto us all things. All things. How? Through the knowledge of God. He is saying that if you get the knowledge of God, then you have the understanding of God, the wisdom of God, and the wisdom of God is the word of God. Then he said that he has given to you by his divine ability all things that pertain to life and godliness. Now, if healing doesn't pertain to life, what does? Finances also pertain to life. We'll stop there tonight for some time of prayer and just some time to talk about what we've read. Let's just uh, close in a word of prayer tonight and then we'll open it up for some of that off screen. But I, I do want us to understand that what we're reading tonight will bring freedom into our life if we apply it. We have to apply it. We can't just believe it. We can't be the rice farmer. I believe in rice. My daddy believed in rice. My great-granddaddy believed in rice. Well, that's good. What did they produce? Nothing. But did they work? No, but boy, they believed. Father, we thank you tonight for this word. And thank you for those joining us online and those here with us. Lord, thank you that your word is truth. We thank you tonight as we read these truths and study them, that they become rhema to us. Lord, they become alive and they begin to change and shape our thinking. And that will change our behavior, Lord. And that will change our results. We thank you tonight for better seasons, for greater results. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. We all said Amen. Amen. Amen.